welcome back. It's the beers gone bad. Where the beer flows like wine. We your are your host tonight. We are our so your are. Pat Tugin. Scott Van Book. You guys, we're back with a UK special. Apparently this is a big one over there. It's called Black Sheep Ale. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got my hat on tonight. I'm ready for it. Um, <laughs> I'm excited for this beer because I made a little bet with Pat before we started filming, and I think that it's going to be a very, very traditional kind of uh, traditional style of beer where it only has four main ingredients. You said malty and yeasty. Malty and yeasty. Yes. With wise. With what? Yeasty and malty. So. Yeah, I think that's how it's going to taste. I think it's going to be like a like a German style kind of beer, like a lager kind of. That's what I think. I haven't even tasted it. I have no idea. I've never smelt it. Hmm. Um, what are we looking at for price and ABV here, PD? These guys unknown and unknown because I didn't buy it. It came all the way from New Zealand for me, and uh, it's ABV is going to be at four point four. It's part of the Kiwi Club. Yeah, it is the Kiwi Club. This was actually donated to our group tonight, so I'm going to pour it out, show you the bottle, and get to it. The bottle. Hey, the bull. The bull. Remember <laughs> Goatman from Saturday Night Live? Yeah, I was. A Great skit. That was a classic skit. It really was. That was like an MTV VJ. Oh god. And then he'd get out of control and they'd prod him with the stick. <laughs> Put him in the cage. Um, Good times, guys. We are reading online that Black Sheep Ale. <coughs> <coughs> oh goodness. Scott's coming over a little sickness. Bear with us. Black Sheep Ale. Check the audio levels. On crisp, the dry, and bittersweet. So this is one of those things that. It said on the website is a big, you know, a big main uh, staple of like every every big retailer's kind of like quiver. You know, they have it uh, brewed back originally. I think the the first one was like ninety three. They said this was brewed in, or first bottle in like ninety three or ninety seven. It's like one of the most widely distributed beers, isn't it? It is one of the one of the bigger ones in the UK. So from them to us, over the pond into our stomachs. Let's get to this. Pat, let's just jump right into clarity. What are you gonna give it? Oh, I was gonna choose you, but it's okay. Oh well. Um, there we go. You can do both. Thanks, man. I'm gonna give this one a three. It's clear, but it's not like I mean, it is actually very crystal clear, but it's got a darker color to it. Uh, I'll second the three. That's that's two three. It does have a bigger head than the other couple beers we've been playing with this week. Um, it's still very tiny. I mean, but we can't even really call that a head. Yeah, it just. I mean, just because there's a little. But it's bit tighter more. though. It's tighter than the Steinlager is though. I mean, the bubbles are yeah, much smaller. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right there. T Y T E. Tight. 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 Okay, what are we going for? You know, the smell of this kind of thing. I can't even tell, I gotta taste it. It's totally wrong of all. Yeah. It's smelling molasses and pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> like gummy worms and licorice lips. A little bit of hairspray? Is there, is there <laughs> hairspray in this? There's some leather. Mm. Yeah. Tanned leather. No, no, not tan leather. Um, that's not bad actually. It's kind of smooth. You I'm know, gonna, just I'll, being a you know standard ale, it's just kind of just there. I'm gonna go the other way and say it's not good either. <laughs> Sorry, not my cup of tea. I've been across. Well, I haven't been across the pond, but I've had drinks from across. The but pond. you have roots across the pond. I now. do have roots. And across so the pond. they go through your body basically. You have English blood. I don't know. What what are you not feeling about this? I don't know. I guess I'm just I'm just wanting something a little bit more. This is the kind of beer that'd be great to have at like a barbecue or um, eating a meal. You're sitting at home. You're gonna make dinner, and they're like, oh, it's a very very good drinkable beer. It almost seems lighter to me than like a a, a a Sam Adams. I want a beer. If I'm expecting like a UK style beer, I want something I can drink a little bit warmer, especially an ale. Something a little bit thicker, thicker head Bigger on kind it. of flavor palette. Yeah, heavier, creamier. <clears throat> Give me something I feel like it's gonna fill me up. You know, not just something I'm gonna you know eat with my fish and chips. And that's just me. And that's just kind of what I was expecting. Kind of what I was hoping for. I'm gonna flip it on you because I actually like. I'm not amazed by this, but I do like it though. And I feel like something like this. This would be a great beer alternative to maybe one of the lighter lagers. Imports, you know the. The buds of the world kind of thing. If you're going to have a party that I would much rather drink this than Budweiser. And solely because... That was for a fly, sorry. Um, 
solely because it's got a better color. It's got a little more flavor than a Bud Light, you know, a Bud Light, Bud, a Budweiser, those kind of things. But look at where you're putting it now. You're putting it back. You're putting it down on the level of Budweiser. No offense to Budweiser. I love Budweiser, but there's I mean, it's, it's four place. and a half percent alcohol. You're not like there's nothing dangerous about this beer. You could literally. I know the warning says only don't drink more than two of these. Two units. Two units <laughs> of these. But realistically, this beer. I mean, you could. You could drink a good a good couple. This of would these. be a great keg beer. You're having a Halloween party. It's this an would be autumn. A great keg it's a beer. great keg. Great keg beer. But as far as your single pint, you know, you're looking for a good strong ale, something good and heavy. This is not it. And it's not it with a flavor. It's kind of like a, a night starter kind of beer. Like you're, you're getting the night kind of started. Maybe sit down at the bar, have put your five bucks down, grab a beer, hang out at the bar for a while. <clears throat> it just wasn't what I was expecting or hoping for. I just, you know. It's a good, very, very drinkable beer. Again, great keg beer, great party beer, great night starter beer. Great Trick or treat your beer. You know, you're gonna put up with kids coming and knocking on your door. But maybe you're just maybe you're thinking this in too broad a spectrum. Like you keep saying great, 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 but then you say it's a bad beer. It's great for what it is, but that's not what I was expecting, not what I was hoping for. So maybe if you just flipped your your you know expectations expectations on it, then it might actually fulfill what you're looking for. If you put it in that lower bracket of starter beers, like yes, they kind of throw you off with the label being all high class and with, but it isn't a round bottle. Two, it only has four and a half percent alcohol. Yeah, I mean. I feel like we had a beer with JC that was like it was like around five percent and it still had a lot of flavor. That is true though. You know, I it's one of those things that just, I'm not overwhelmed with the flavor. Um, the thickness of the beer, yeah. I guess it's kind of more of like a bass level to me yeah. than than I was. I don't know why I was expecting something heavier. Well, I think the label kind of threw me off because it, I thought it was going to come out a much darker, yeah, you know, more robust kind of flavor. Black sheep. You're saying black. You're throwing black in the title. Yeah. It's not bad though, you know, for what it is, I'm going to give it a five and a half for me. I don't know what Scott's going to give it, but I, you know, it's drinkable. It's totally something that I think I'm, I would order it as an alternative in a bar setting. I'm going to go ahead and just contradict myself here. You know, it's not going to be one of those things that I would go out and repeatedly buy, but if in a bar setting, if I was given the option, I might, you know, this would be in one of my top, my top picks if, you know, just if it was standard taps. I'll give it a five. I wouldn't pay any more for it. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see it as like a premium import and pay the, the extra, you know, three or four bucks for the, the bottle if I was going to have a Budweiser. And that is why we're here, guys. For those of you who don't know who are just checking in, possibly, we're the beers gone bad. Where the beers looks like what? Uh, we are here to help you kind of walk through the nuances of beer. We're new to beer, relatively speaking, and the, and the brewing side of it. And... We're happy that you want to be on our journey as we discover more about this and let you know what we know. Well said, Pat. Because for everything we know, I don't want you to feel stupid because you don't understand what hops are because realistically, we're still trying to find out what those are too. You know, like a month ago, we actually figured out what hops actually were. So. And when we find out, <laughs> we will be let, we'll, we'll let you know first. So from us to you and from England to our stomachs, this guy gets a five. five I'm Pat. This is Scott. We'll see you next time. Take care, guys.